Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now in this video what I want to talk about is how to set up your Raspberry Pi uh, to run Pi whole. Um, now you might have seen in my last video uh, which is about why you need a Raspberry Pi I kind of covered the Pi hole and how it works with blocking ads on your home network. Um, so what I want to do today is kind of just show you how to set this up. So there's a couple of prereqs uh, for this. Um, I'm going to assume you have a Raspberry Pi or uh, you don't need to have Raspberry Pi, um, it just needs to be something that can always be on running um, a supported operating system uh, distribution. Um, I'll cover those as I go onto the Pi Hole website. Um, and I just, you need to have, if you are using a Raspberry Pi, you need to have it set up to run um, Raspberry Pi OS. Um, I'll leave a link in the description to uh, Raspberry Pi OS and some tools to write onto an SD card, but I'm not going to cover it in this video Otherwise, it's going to be a very long video. Um, so we'll be starting off um, with connecting to the um, Raspberry Pi, so make sure you're at that point and I'll walk you through it Right, so what you're currently looking at is my existing uh, Pi hole setup uh, Which is running on a different Raspberry Pi compared to the one I just showed you um, but I'm going to set it up on a new Raspberry Pi that I have here um, and what the end goal will be is that you will have a Raspberry Pi running Pi hole of your own uh, that will be filtering out ad traffic on your home network. Uh, so you should have something exactly like this um, at the end of this video. So first things first, what you're going to want to do is actually connect to your Raspberry Pi. Um, I'm going to connect to mine over SSH. Um, if you have yours set up on a screen uh, with a mouse and keyboard, uh, you can follow along as well, that's fine. Uh, you just need to connect to your Raspberry Pi. So once you're connected to your Raspberry Pi, what you can do is you come to the Pi Hole website and you can see here that it's a pretty much step-by-step -step guide on how uh, to follow it through. So what you can do is you can come down and you can follow along if you want to store it into Docker. Um, and also you can see the supported operating system. So let's just quickly cover those supported operating systems. So you can see that Raspberry Pi OS, uh, which is formerly, formerly called Raspbian, uh, and that's how I was not, I've known it by. Um, this is the, the new name is new to me. <laughs> um, you can run it on Ubuntu, Debian, Fedora, and CentOS. So if you can't run it on a Raspberry Pi, maybe you could just have it on like a laptop that you can leave on running or something. Um, since this is going to be your DNS, uh, your local DNS, you need it to be on at all times, otherwise your internet will stop working. So what I recommend is if you are going to do this, install Raspberry Pi OS, um, because it already has all the dependencies to run Pi Hole, you don't need to install anything else. It should, uh, the automatic installer for Pi Hole should just work. Cool, so once you've got uh, a supported operating system and you're ready to go and you're connected, uh, like we were just doing before, you can come down to install Pi Hole. So if we just click here, this will take us to the GitHub page and you can see here that they actually have a one-step automated install. If you don't like doing those sort of things, you can um, clone the repos repository and do it yourself or there's uh, manually download the installer and run it that way. But the automated install is a piece of cake and since we're on a supported op uh, distribution, it will just work. So what we want to do, we've copied that link uh, from the GitHub page and if we paste it in, it's going to pull down the installer for Pi Hole. And as you can see, as I've just copied and pasted it, I've got to cancel it here, is that if you just copy and paste this in, um, you need to run this at elevated privileges, otherwise this will not work. And you can run it at elevated privileges by using sudo, um, or sudo, or however you want to pronounce it. So if you just do that, and then put the command in, this will then be able to install Pi Hole correctly. So now what's going to happen is it's going to make sure that your Raspberry Pi is up to date and then it's going to check your Raspberry Pi for any dependencies or if you're missing any software. So if your install does cut out halfway through um, and it comes up some errors or something, it was 99% of the time it's because you're missing a dependency and normally Pi Hole is pretty good at telling you which one you are missing and which one to install. So once it's gone through the dependencies check, uh, you will get the Pi Hole automated installer pop up. So this is pretty much a tick box installer. We say yes or no to things we do and we don't want. Uh, so let's just go through them, but most of them we are just going to accept as default. So from here, we'll just click OK, and that's all just done by pressing enter. Uh, so here you can see that the Pi Hole is free, but powered by your donations. Um, I really do uh, want to express that you should donate to this if you do use it quite a bit and it is helping you. Um, I definitely am going to join their Patreon um, because it is something I use a lot and I really do want to support uh, this, this project, it's great. So what you're doing here, just hit OK. 
Now it says here that your Pi Hole is a server, so it needs a static IP address. So remember, what this is doing is you've got all your computers on your home network. They're going to this IP address because they know that's where they go, uh, you know, externally. That's the route to go to the internet. Now, if that IP address that they've known is the way out changes, they don't know where to go, right? So this is why you need a static IP address set on your Raspberry Pi. Now, so as you can see here, it's going to allow you to do it manually. Uh, sorry, automatically through this install, um, but then it's also encouraged that you go into your router and set the uh, IP address as static as well. Now, I can't really walk you through that because each router is different, but generally they have a little spot there where you just go into your LAN network and set static IP addresses. So what we'll do here is we'll just hit OK. And here we now can choose our DNS provider. Um, so when you think of DNS provider, you might know the typical one like 8.8.8.8, .8 .8, which is Google. Um, but I am just going to use Open DNS again. You can look through this list here and choose which ones you want. You can even specify your own custom one. But this is your DNS provider for the actual internet. Um, so I'm just going to use Open DNS for mine. Now here, what this is is a block list that can be pre uh, provided for you. So this here has a lot of domains. I can't remember how many, it's like 50,000 or something of blocked uh, advertising domains and stuff like that. Um, so this is a great one to get you started and then you can just kind of add to it and remove as need be. So if you're happy with using the default one, just hit enter. And here you can select the protocols that you want to support. So IPv6 isn't that supported, um, yet things are getting up there, um, but there's no reason not to enable it. So I just leave both the IPv4 and IPv6 enabled. So I'll just hit enter. And now you can see here, do you want to use your current network settings as a static IP address? So that IP address is the current IP address of my Raspberry Pi, and yes, I would like to. So now it's saying that there could be a conflict that if it's not set statically in the router, my router could maybe give that IP address away uh, that's on my Raspberry Pi to another device on my network. So it's telling me I should probably go into the router and set a static IP address just to make sure that my router doesn't give the IP address away. With it okay. And now it's saying that this IP address will be used to block ads because it's, as you can see at the top here, IPv6 is supported. And we're happy with that, so we'll hit okay. And now it says, do you wish to install the web admin interface? Now the web admin interface is this. That's what the web admin interface is. That's one where you can see a nice little graphic interface of everything happening. Um, I do uh, suggest that you get this, otherwise you can get other ones as well um, that are just pure command line based, um, which I'll, I can show you um, on after this as well, kind of what that one looks like. But you probably want that one, so I would select yes. So if you are wanting it, just select and hit enter or uh, leave it on. Now, do you wish to install the web server? So if you're going to have that web admin inter interface and stuff, leave this as on. So hit enter. Do you want to log your queries? So the queries is every network thing that is happening, uh, every, all the network traffic that's happening on your network. Do you want to log it? Yes, you generally do. Um, so I'm going to hit enter for OK. Now here you can select the privacy mode. So uh, what this means is you can see what domains people are searching for, or you can hide those. Uh, so you can only just see the traffic and not what the traffic is. And you can also hide as well what the client names are on your network. Um, I like to see everything, so I just hit leave it as um, show everything. So hit OK. And now I've done the installer. It's just going to finish up doing the rest of the checks and installs that it would do that I don't need to put any input into. And then after that, uh, we will have Pi Hole installed. So I'll see you after it's installed. Cool, so you know that your Pi Hole has been set up correct when you see this. So don't just skip through this. So what this will give you is that um, this is the IP address you need to configure as your DNS server. I'll show you how to do that in a second. Um, and if you change your IP address um, for this, then that needs to be configured as your DNS server. Uh, if you want to see the install log, you can just go in your Raspberry Pi and look at this here and it'll just tell you everything, uh, the whole installation process. Uh, and you can access the web, web interface like I was showing you just before um, at this link here. Um, and this is your initial password here. You can change it if you like, um, but this is your initial web page login. 
um, password so don't lose that make sure you copy that um, into a notepad file so I will quickly do that so once you've copied that password just hit ok and now you can see down the bottom installation is complete so now what we can do is if we go to uh, this link here on our browser uh, we should see the web page so on a new tab I'm going to paste in that new IP address I'm going to hit enter and now you can see that we do have a brand new uh, pie hole set up so now if we click login and we copy and paste that password in that was given to us at the installation and hit login and we can see that we are now in and by default we have a domains on block list 59,000 um, and now what you want to do say if you just wanted a specific computers to use this as a DNS server what you could actually do is change your network configuration uh, just for the one computer uh, and that looks like this so if I hit the Windows button and hit Ethernet and then go to settings and then change adapter options for my Ethernet um, you get everything as well as your wireless and stuff like that but I am on Ethernet so if I clicked in here and then went properties and then went to IPv4 and then down here you can see that I have 4.9 as my preferred uh, DNS server but if I change that to 212 and hit OK and close that that means that my new DNS server is now my Raspberry Pi um, and you can see now look at all these queries coming through so if I start loading up some web pages and stuff like that we'll see so let me just visit like a, a news article page and we'll see how many queries and stuff we get one second so let me just look up uh, uh, USA News or something because they always have like a lot of ads like CNN look at this can you see that 96 97 queries block 23 straight away just from visiting one page um, now if I click on something else um, bam look at all these things all these advertising things are trying to get onto my page and it's all just been blocked um, I'm just going to close that and that's how easy it is now if you wanted sorry let me just fix my screen here now if you wanted this to be on everything so what you can do is you can actually go into your router and change your DNS server to this IP address let me just show you what that looks like on my uh, router just so you get some sort of an idea so on my router under um, settings and then LAN what you can see here it says local DNS server and what I've done here is I've just changed this was originally uh, 192.168.1.1 so that was my router was my DNS server but what I've done is I've told it my DNS server actually is 49 and then if your router is generally your DHCP server as well so that means that it's handing out the IP addresses for your network so it will hand them out the IP address and the DNS server so it will hand those out to new devices over time so over time the devices on your network will get that new DNS server and they will start being on it uh, if you want them on it now you can set it manually as I was showing you before so you just have to go onto all your devices and point it to them otherwise just wait for that to come through um, now your Raspberry Pi, uh, your Pi Hole can actually act as your DHCP server as well at, for handing out IP addresses and stuff like that as well. Um, that's pretty quick and easy to do. Let me just quickly cover that for you. Um, but in terms of the actual uh, setting up Pi Hole, that's done now. So if you're interested in the DHCP part, just stick along and I'll quickly cover that. So if you want to set up DHCP on your Pi Hole, what all you got to do is be logged into your Pi Hole and then go, uh, let me jump onto the new one actually. So we're on the new one here. Um, so what you need to do is go to settings and then click on DHCP and you want to make sure that the DHCP server is enabled and then you want to choose a range of IP addresses that you will hand out. So you could maybe go from uh, 50 up to 251 and then you would save that. I'm not going to save it because I already have another pie hole as my DHCP server and once you would save that you would come into your router and then within your router you would turn off DHCP server uh, so your router is not trying to give out IP addresses only your Pi Hole will as easy as that was that is essentially how you set up Pi Hole on your Raspberry Pi um, a little long this video it does take a while to cover this sort of stuff but I'm hoping you are able to get this sorted if you have any problems any questions please feel free to ask me in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to help you out right here guys I'll see you in the next video bye